talking about the organization of GIA. And for that, I'll be using different models to look into the arrangement of different organs in my abdominal cavity. To begin with the understanding of my GI, first of all, we have to look at the structures who are located anteriorly to my abdominal cavity. And this is you're looking at the anterior abdominal wall. This anterior abdominal wall is primarily made up of muscles. And these muscles are arranged in layers. And these muscles are arranged, named according to their direction of fibers and most of them are organized obliquely transversely and vertically the first muscle which is coming obliquely downwards that is my external oblique you can see that it is interdigitating with my serratus anterior muscle and then this muscle is coming down all the way close to my anterior superior allic spine and beyond that it becomes aponeurotic because my anterior abdominal wall is not very thick and this aponeurotic part is being descending down and here is attached to my anterior superior allic spine and there it goes to the pubic tubercle and this lower rolled in part of my external oblique muscle it's making my inguinal ligament and this muscle meets with its counterpart on the opposite side to complete this complete first wrap of my external oblique anteriorly now look at it on this side of the model external oblique muscle is not shown so you can see that all the digitation of my serratus anterior external oblique is not visible in the picture but now you can see another muscle layer that is below to my external oblique and the fibers are going in an opposite direction. They are going upwards. External oblique, they were coming downwards and they were crossing each other at 90 degree. And this muscle which is ascending upwards, that is my internal oblique muscle. And when we remove this, then only we can see transverses abdominus muscle which is not possible to show you on this model. In a common term, we always heard about six packs. What is the six packs? Can you see these transversely going interdigitations? These are once someone is spending time in workouts, so this tendons become apparent because the fat dissociates from my anterior abdominal wall and then person will proudly show to you his six packs. And primarily, you can see there's a muscle which is going vertically. And this is a straight muscle. And we have learned before, this anything straight is rectus. And this is rectus abdominus. Now, this rectus abdominus is enclosed by my external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominus. Differently, they envelop this muscle. And this arrangement, this organization, is different at different levels that we will be covering when we'll be talking about the organization of the rectus sheath. Now what are we looking at? We are looking at the rib cage and these costal margins are really important for various clinical examination procedures and their close correlation with the lower part of my liver these are very instrumental and when you are asked to examine a patient, costal margin is always one of the very important clinically consideration. There we can see the liver, the stomach as we have seen before, a transverse colon, the loops of my small intestine, they comprise of jejunum mostly on this side and the ileum remaining three quadrants. And you can see slightly visible to you the descending and the sigmoid colon and here you can see the cecum and the ascending column. Now we have removed the anterior abdominal wall and you can see the organization of different organs within my abdominal cavity. 
you can see a partition here this partition is called diaphragm it is this diaphragm separates the content of my thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity even you can see little bit of lower part of my lungs and little part of my heart but right now we'll focus on the organs which are located in my abdominal cavity and you can see this big brownish structure which is located more on the right side and this is my liver and on the left side this swollen ballooned up part is my stomach and then you can see this grayish band which is going transversely this is part of my large intestine this is my transverse colon and if I proceed towards the right iliac fossa there you can see the cecum which becomes the ascending colon and then there is this is under the liver we have the hepatic flexion then we have this transverse colon and then spleen is located here and then from here we call it splenic flexure and then it descends down with the name of the descending colon and here it becomes sigma shape so we call it sigmoid colon and in the bottom which I cannot show you at the moment it becomes rectum and end as an anal canal and in between you can see this pinkish structure these are the loops coils of my small intestine now the rib cage has been removed you can see the full view of the liver and you can see very clearly on the left side it's left lobe and on the right side is the right lobe of the liver you may notice here this greenish structure is the fundus part of my gallbladder you can see the transverse colon and here what you can see what is covering my transverse colon it is also covering on this side this is my greater omentum this greater omentum is a very important structure it is also called policeman of the abdominal cavity now you can see very clearly the cecum the first part from where my large intestine begins and then you can see it's going upwards with the name of ascending colon and ultimately it becomes transverse colon and then it descends as descending colon then it becomes sigma shape as sigmoid colon and then it ends as rectum to ultimately anal canal now let's remove these organs one by one to see how the structures are located posterior to them now what you notice after removal of the liver you can see the full blown view of my diaphragm its fibrous part and the muscular part you may notice here you can see part of my suprarenal gland and then you can see the lesser curvature and the greater curvature of my stomach and this is the fundus part and ultimately my stomach it becomes duodenum and then you can see now transverse colon started becoming more clearer now after removal of the stomach what you can notice the right dome of the diaphragm the left dome of the diaphragm look at the central tendon of my diaphragm is a fibrous structure and peripherally it is a muscular structure diaphragm is not a horizontal plate it is a dome shaped structure and there you can see the opening of my esophagus and this esophagus it becomes stomach and that fills up this whole area on the left side if you look at it this organ that is my spleen and then if you notice from the hilum of my spleen a transversely going structure that is the pancreas and there you can see the duodenum the beginning of my duodenum I'm putting my probe inside there we can see the suprarenal of the right suprarenal gland and the left suprarenal gland and you may see a little bit part of my kidney becomes visible to you this is very clearly shown up the hepatic flexure the part where my ascending colon bends to become transverse colon and close to my spleen this is the splenic flexure now we have removed loops of small intestine loops of large intestine all other organs including pancreas now what we can see these tubes what are these tubes on right side we are looking at inferior vena cava and then you are looking at the abdominal aorta these inferior vena cava abdominal aorta and esophagus they have openings in the diaphragm at different levels and we need to understand these levels 
accordingly with the vertebral levels. And you can see the different tributaries which are draining into my inferior vena cava and different branches coming, emerging from my abdominal aorta. Now, if you pay attention to these three ventral branches emerging from my aorta on its anterior surface, this is I'm pointing at celiac trunk or celiac axis. This is my superior mesenteric artery and this is my inferior mesenteric artery. These three are one of the most important arteries which are given in the abdominal aorta. This is the artery of my foregut derivatives. This artery, my superior mesenteric, is supplying my mid-gut derivatives and inferior mesenteric artery, it supplies my hind-gut derivatives. These derivatives, you'll understand when we'll be learning about the developmental part of the intestine. 